Hello, this is Doker. Today we are going to talk about masonry weathering. A few days ago, one of my YouTube followers sent me this picture. He wanted to know what happened to his brick, what's the cause of it, and how to fix it. I looked at the picture and I told him, you got a wall scout above that brick. It's a cause of it. He got a bit confused. He was wondering, why? The wall scout is high above there and the damage is just down here. How come like a, a wall scout could cause the damage? I said, that's water damage. First of all, let's talk about water damage. There are a few kind of water damage on bricks and also on stone. The most common one, the water gets into, into the brick and uh, freezes and breaks. Particularly, you will see this very often on chimney. Because in the old days, most of the chimney do not have drip edge. So the water will soak into the brick and it, at night, then it freezes when the sunlight hits the brick. So the brick soaks the water again. So every day, particularly between March and April, every day it defrost, freeze, defrost, freeze. This helps accelerate of the weathering. This happens a lot on old buildings, but not for this one. As you can see, it's not that kind of damage. So what is actually causing of this damage? Underneath of the dripping water, if you have a stone slab, day by day, the water could make a hole on the slab. So this is what causes the damage. As you can see here, it has a wall scout just above the brick. Every time when it rains, the water hits the wall scout and it collects all the water around the wall scout, then drip at the middle of it. When that water falls down onto, onto the ground, it will splash. The speed of the water is very high. So it would just directly hit the brick and causing the damage. Although we feel like the brick is very strong, but actually on the surface, if you use your finger to touch it, there would be powders fall off because it's not as strong as you believe. Because of the repeatedly damage from the dripping water and it hits it, years later, this kind of damage would gradually takes off all the motor, all the surface of the brick. So that's the two kind of damage. There is other kind of water damage as well. For some new buildings, you will see like a large of white powder on top of the brick. That means that the brick is start to suffer water damage. What happened is like when the water gets into the brick, so the chemicals would start to release and then it re collects at the surface of the brick. That's where the white powder come off. If you see the white powder on the brick, that means that you have a water issue down there. The cause of it mainly is because either you do not have a proper drip edge or you do not have proper eaves projection. I'm a big fan of eaves projection because a big eave projection protects the wall. However, some new buildings, they prefer to have minimum eaves projection or just a simple wall goes up and with a little cap on that. So think about it, when the water falls from the flashing on top of the wall so it's only like one or two centimeters away from the wall 
every time when it went out during the waterfall, it would hit the wall. So majority of the water will not fall onto, onto the ground. Instead, it will hit the wall. So day by day, the wall collects the water and all the chemicals inside it released to the outside. There is also another type of damage that is caused by the ice salt. So every time in Canada, we will spread the salt onto the ground. If the snow is so close, if the snow is so close to your masonry, when it melts, some of the salt will get into the brick and it might have some kind of chemical reaction to the brick. That is another type of the damage. How to prevent such kind of damage? First of all, you need to have proper brick ledge. In Canada, we normally build the brick six to eight inches above the ground. It sits on concrete. So when it snows, the melting wa water will not get into the brick. That's number one. Number two, you need to have proper eaves projection. Ideally, no less than one foot six. It's about 18 inches. By doing this for two story houses, it could protect the wall from top to bottom. If the eaves projection only a few inches, it may not provide a very good coverage for the brick walls. If you only have a brick wall with a flash only one or two centimeters away, that does no help. It only protects a few layers on the top, but not the rest of the body. Drip is, is also very important. Particularly for the window seal. For each of the window seal, you need to have a drip it. This helps to stop the caterpillar reaction. That means like the water cannot climb up to the wall. Otherwise, without the drip edge, the water could still climb up and then end up on the wall to create the damage. I have a video about the drippage. If you have time, you can take a look at that. When you try to install any of the fixtures on the wall, you have to be careful. For the garages, if you want to install a wall scout, make sure the wall scout is going to be properly covered by the eaves projection. If your eaves projection is not big enough, then try to avoid it. This you can use soffit light instead.
underneath, it will be better to have grass instead of hard surface. Because the grass is soft, it normally have less splash than the hard surface. When choose the space to place the wash gun, you can place it in the middle of a door. Because in the middle of a door, that the door is hard surface and it doesn't absorb water. That could provide a good protection to your masonry. Some people might challenge my explanation. Hold on a second. You talk about water damage. Yes, I have a wash gun above the brick. And I see the water marks, but the brick is okay. You talk about the drippage. Yes, I don't have a drippage. And I see the salt on the brick, but it's still okay. So how would you explain that? This comes to the hardness of the brick. When making a brick, the temperature really matters. That's why that some of the brick soaks a lot of water and some of the brick do not. The ones doesn't absorb a lot of water, it's actually harder. When a brick soaks a lot of water, it when it freezes, it expands a lot. If a brick does not soak a lot of water, it only expands little. In the old days, when making the brick, they used coal. That is hard to adjust the temperature to make it crack. That's why a lot of old houses is easily to have the damage. However, for the new bricks, they normally use electricity to make the brick. And the temperature can be easily controlled. However, different kind of manufacturer have different standard. It's not strong enough, it absorbs a lot of water. Most likely those kind of bricks can easily get damaged. The reason I make this video is because my framework came to me. He said, I watch every of your video, but I cannot speak Chinese. Although I couldn't understand it, but I'm guessing, I mean, what's it about? When he has questions, he would ask me because I can feel he has strong passion in building homes. Also today, my interior designer came to me. I know you have a YouTube video. Can you have it in English? I would be so interested to know it. Now here it comes. If you really love this video, please leave a comment and let me know. So do you have any suggestions? Please also leave a comment. I hope this can be helpful. Thank you and have a wonderful day.